Hi, it's T with T Quilts, and I'm here to work with some fabric by the Spirit of the Artisan. And I'll put the information up on the screen, but I'm basically here just showing you how I double stitched on each side of this trim that I purchased from them when I was in Houston, Texas. I purchased two pieces of this trim, so I made sure I stitched the ends down before I pre-washed, which is what's recommended by them. You saw me trying to hold up a piece of paper, but I realized you couldn't see it. It's telling me that I need to wash this fabric before I use it. So the wash instructions are wash first, heavy duty cycle with tile, soap and fabric softener, trim ends, and then put in dryer. You will need to trim the applique to size after washing, but I suggest you decide which pattern you want to use the measurement to trim to size. It says, Buy a little extra applique. It may slightly come apart when you wash and as you sew and cut. washed ran through the wash cycle and then took everything out and put it into the dryer so I'm just taking out these towels that I had in there and then I'm going to show you how the trim looks shortly So it's pretty tangled up, <laughs> especially the piece that's one and a half yards. That piece is really bad. The purple didn't seem to have as much threads to take off. So before I put this in the dryer, I'm going to get a pair of scissors. And I'm going to start trimming off all those straight threads. You could see on the end piece where I had stay stitch, I didn't have a whole lot of unraveling on the end, which was good. Okay, quilters, it has actually been a few days, maybe almost a week since I've last worked on this. It's actually Christmas Eve. As you can hear from my voice, I'm still not better, but I do want to go ahead and finish this. I want to make a quick tote, just going to be a basic tote, just so I can give to my uh, sister-in-law. Actually, I'm giving it to my brother because he's going to give it to her. Uh, I'm going to wrap it as a gift for him, but it's for her because he would normally pay for it anyway. But I wanted to show you what came out of my dryer. I got some more lint. So the lint that I showed you earlier plus this, um, these strings were attached to the pieces here. Not the lint from my dryer, but these pieces were still attached. So I don't know if they were attached from the washing 
and I just didn't see it or if they also occur during the drying process but you'll know how much it's going to do that um, here this purple piece I actually purchased a yard and then on this yellow red black and orange piece I actually purchased a yard and a half so I'm going to see I'm actually holding the camera because I don't have it on a stand but I am going to see if I can measure this to see how much did it shrink. So bear with me with the camera here. So I'm going to start with this purple one because it's supposed to be a yard. And I'm not sure if they overcut or undercut. So there is no telling. They could have given us more knowing that it was going to shrink because I am actually at 37 inches and it's already been washed and do see my double stitching that I put on the ends before I washed and then this basting stitch here was already included then on this this one here I actually purchased a yard and a half So this one should go to 54 inches on the mat. So let's see, where does it stop? It actually stops at 55 inches. So I'm thinking that they gave us some extra. So I really can't tell you how much this shrank. I will show you the wrong side of this one. You can kind of see how it's been pieced. Some of the big chunks are still left in there. But this was very wiry, like very stiff when I before I washed it. And now it's very, very soft. So I'm just going to make a basic tote bag um, with this one here because my sister-in-law wanted an orange and red bag. And so at least it has the orange and red in here she wanted something bright so I am going to use this orange fabric as an accent as well as this fabric so again this is going to be very basic it is actually Christmas Eve it's 11 o'clock p.m. and I've been sick and I've been trying to cook I have less energy so I am not moving as fast as I like but I do have my two other items I have to cook tomorrow they're already prepped so all I got to do is just get up and get them into the oven in the morning so I thought maybe what I would do is I will cut out the bag tonight and maybe start sewing some pieces tomorrow so that's what I'm gonna work on is uh, cutting some pieces and getting them interfaced so I will let you see what I do next all right so I did some cutting and I just wanted to show you what I have cut and where they're going to go so first off this is going to be her main bag fabric since orange is her favorite color and I cut this 18 inches wide by 30 and one half inches long and then what I've done here which you can't see is that I have cut a three inch square out the middle so that I can box the corners there so I just cut a three inch square I'll go ahead and move this over so that it won't interfere with the next pieces coming up I cut the exact same piece of fabric 18 by 30 and one half inches and also cut the three inch corners out so that I could box it and then I'm going to go back to the top just to show you that I also cut a piece of lining fabric that I also put on the back of this. So we've got the back front and the lining. And then I also cut two pieces of this focus material. And I'm going to make pockets with these that I am going to put on the front of the bag. So what I cut was I squared these up because they were kind of a little wavy they weren't straight anymore from being washed so I pressed them and then I made these six and a half inches by 18. I cut this a little bit bigger just to give me some wiggle room these are 18 by seven instead of six and a half 
And what I'm actually going to do is take these right sides together and I am going to sew this together on one long side and then flip this to the back. And then I'll have a little bit excess hanging, but I wanted to make sure since this was a little bit thicker that it didn't take up any more room. It should not because I've got the black single fabric here, but I just wanted to make sure. So I cut those pieces. And then the last piece I cut, I had a piece of scrap left over from cutting the back pieces. So I used that, I cut it down into five and a half inches and I had about 23 inches of that. And then I cut another strip that was also five inches and I sewed it together and then I also put interfacing on it. This is going to be my bag handles. And normally I cut my bag handles like 26 and a half inches long because I like my bags to be long because when you fill them up they tend to the strap gets shorter so that's what I'm going to do here is cut these into two pieces 26 and a half inches by five for my straps so that's all I'm going to do today my uh, throat is hurting from talking so much <laughs> and I'm going to go relax and hopefully I can get this bag sewn tomorrow for her and I'll try to show you some steps. It just depends on what's going on. Alright guys, I'm back. I didn't take a break yet. <laughs> I thought I was going to go to bed. It's about 12.15 right now. But I went ahead and sewed my lining to my pocket. I put my lining right sides together. And then I stitched a 3 8 inch of a seam. And then I folded it to the back. You can see my lining here. And then I top stitched... A quarter of an inch from the top to make sure I held that pocket top down this is going to be a pocket on the outside front and back and then also on the bottom here I stay stitched along the edge once I press this down really good so you can see the entire thing here and now I'm just going to trim off the excess lining fabric that I had so it didn't take up one of them took up a little bit more fabric than the other so I've trimmed this one already and so I'm going to go ahead and trim this one alright so I got those two pieces ready to go on my bag. I want to make sure that I keep track of what's the top, the two top pieces because it does matter because I've got that top stitching on the top. And then here is my bag top and I'm just going to go ahead and open it out because I want to now place my pocket and I'm going to place my pocket. Let me get a smaller ruler. I'm going to place it about three and a half inches from the top. Uh, please note that I don't have a pattern here. I'm just making this up. <laughs> so if my pattern is placed right here, that's about three and a half inches from the top for my pocket. Maybe I might want to put it at three inches from the top. So it's not as close to these bottom corners here. But I think that's a good spot. So what I'm going to do is take some pins and put a pin right here. And a pin over here. And then I'm going to flip this over on those pins. But I'm going to go up like a quarter of an inch because I'm going to be stitching on that line. So about a quarter of an inch up. And then I'm just going to go ahead and repin that. Hoping you can see that. And then over here, I've done the same thing where I've got it about a quarter of an inch away from the pin. And I'm going to pin that. So 
So I'm actually going to now go stitch a quarter of an inch seam here. And then I'm going to flip this up. And that's how my pocket's going to end back up at the top. So I'm going to actually do that on both sides. And then when I finish that, I'll come back and show you the results. Alrighty, I'm back and I have sewn my seam here one quarter of an inch from this raw edge here and then I went to the pressing station and I pressed this up so that it's nice and flat and now what I want to do is just pin the tops to secure them in place And then next what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and stay stitch right on top of this black real close to the edge. And then I'm also going to make some straight lines where I can stitch down to make some sections for my pockets. This is the pocket top. And so now I want to put some lines here so that I can section that part off. And I've already done it on the other end so I could show you. So here I have stitched the black parts down. I'm just going to zoom in so you can see a little bit more. So I have stitched all along this bottom the whole 18 inches. And then I just came in 6 inches. You can pick whatever size you want. It doesn't really matter. I just like to make it so that I know I can get my hand in it. So I just sectioned this into three six inch pockets because this is 18 inches and on the other side I may add another stitch line about an inch away in the center so that I can add like a pocket if she wants to clip a pin here then it has a little bitty space for a pin to hang so I'll just do that on one side but I will after I finish that step on this other side that's when I'm going to put this back right sides together and I'm going to stitch both side seams. So I'll do all of that and I'll come back and show you my next step. Okay, I'm back and I have my bag here where I have sewn a 3 8 inch seam down both sides. And the next step after that is that you can press this open if you want the same allowances here but for right now I'm just going to go ahead and finger press this open so I'm going to finger press that open and then this seam line I'm going to put on this press fold line and then I am going to pull up these raw edges so that I am finishing off the bottom portion of the bag again this is where I cut that three inch square out you can cut your square any size you want if you want a bigger gusset I'm putting a bigger bottom base on here so her bottom is actually going to be approximately six inches on the bottom and then once I get this pulled off here I will pin this and then I will go ahead and stitch one quarter inch seam on this side and I've already done that on this other side so you can see what I did and I actually did that stitching twice just to reinforce the bottom of the bag so yeah I will go ahead and do that to this side and then I'm also going to go ahead and do the same thing with my lining, except that my lining will not have any pockets. It's just going to be plain as I'm making a basic bag because I don't have time. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that lining. And I'm going to do the exact same thing, except that in the middle on one of the sides, I'm going to leave about three to four inches unsewn so that I can turn the bag when it's done. But I'll, we'll get to that. I'll just show you that because I'm going to go ahead and sew that as well. Okay. All right, I'm back and I have my 
bag that I have sewn and my lining. And so both my bottoms have now been sewn. And I'm just going to temporarily flip this out just so you can see it. bottom over there situated and so now because I did that bottom the bag will now sit up by itself and here is my pin pocket here and I wanted to make sure that like a sharpie marker would fit so I put this in there and I actually left that one inch gap in between here so that a pin will fit and then you can use the that part there to hold it so yeah, that's the bag, and then here is my lining, and on the lining, as I mentioned to you before, I left about five inches open right here, so when I put this bag together, that I can turn it right sides out. So the lining will actually have a hole here once the bag is done, and that's how I'm going to actually turn through that hole. So this is my lining. I also have those ends of the bag sewed as well. So the next step is that I need to now add the handles onto the bag before I sew these two pieces together. So this is my piece here. And I think I'm going to cut maybe 25 and a half inches. I want to give her some longer handles because she's just as tall as I am. I have one bag where I cut them 20 inches and another bag where I cut them like 28 inches. So that's going to be the next step is to cut two pieces of this. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and show you because I'll come back with this step done. Is I'm going to fold this bag in half, I mean this strap in half. I'm going to have two of them. I'm going to fold each one of them in half and press with my iron. Then I'm going to open and I'll have that center line. And then I'm going to fold each side to the center line. I'm going to press that. And then I am going to fold these two pieces together. So I will come back with that when I see you next. Alright, I am back and I have my straps and I just wanted to show you that I had my 5 inch width strap fold in half like this first to get this center crease line and then I folded my raw edges to that crease line all the way down the entire strap and then I took that and folded that in half. So this is my strap. It's about one and about one and a quarter wide. I just wanted it, I like my straps just a tad wider than one inch. And I do like to interface or put batting in them as well. So you can choose which you do. So then on my second strap, I just took that strap and I sewed down the raw edges here. Hoping you can see that on both sides and then I also just approximately went down the center just to help reinforce my handle. So this is what I have for my handle right now. So I'm going to zoom you out a little bit. This is my scrap I had left over. Alright, so now we want to put this strap onto the bag and one way to do that is to take a measurement from the side and just decide where you want to put your straps and then you do that on both sides to make sure that they match. So I think I'm going to do like four inches. So this is four inches right here. So that means my strap will be centered right along this edge. So what I'm going to do is just put a pin right here where the four inches is on this side. And then I'm also going to do the same thing over here. Measure off four inches 
and place a pin. And then once I put this strap on, I will just use this strap to measure where it goes on the other side. So I'm on one side of the bag. It doesn't matter which side you're on. I've got my strap. You want to make sure that you don't twist your straps when you're putting it on. You don't want it to be knotted. So I want to put my right sides on to the bag right side facing right side you do have a stitching line to tell you what you, what is right side and what is not your bobbin thread and so I'm just going to center this on that pin which is my approximate center looks like where I did my stitching so that's really good and then I probably put a few more pins in here just because I want to make sure this stays in place and I see I did not cut this thread I'll cut that before I sew this because I don't want it to show afterwards so making sure that my strap has not been turned I want to now center over on the other side right at that pin And then I would line up my other I would line up my other strap on this side, but I have to go sew it first. And then once I do that, I'm just going to backstitch two, maybe even three times across each strap because I want to make sure that my bag is not going to fall apart at the straps. And I'm going to do that about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch on those stitches, and I'll be back. Okay, I'm back and I have my handles sewn onto my bag. And when I put my handles on the bag, I stitched down, I back stitched, and then I stitched down again. So let me zoom in so you can see the stitching here. You can't hardly see it because it's right on top. I stitched down, back stitch, and then I stitched down again. I'm going to turn my lining to the wrong side. Let me zoom you back out again. And then I have my side seams. So I am actually going to put my bag inside of my lining because I want right sides together. I want to make sure we tuck in the handles and everything. So now I have my bag inside of my linings and as you can see my two right sides are together now if I was making this bag and had a little bit more time I would have pressed these seams open but what I am going to do is just do it with my hand right here press it open right here and then we're going to match these seams up right here and I'm going to pin I am going to go to the opposite side and do the exact same thing on the other side. So I will put that same together in pin. And I put two pins in just in case one gets one falls out. I've got the second one as a safety. I did sew three eighths of an inch seam on each side, so this should line up. 
and if not then you're going to make sure that you make these two fit together so I'm just going to put a pin on either side of this handle for right now and then I'm going to go over here and do the exact same thing so just want a pin to make sure everything's gonna fit before you start sewing and it does not fit move my pin cushion down <laughs> one in the middle right there so I'm gonna do the same pinning on the opposite side one pin on either side of the handle and then that handle is just gonna be locked into that position do the same thing here And then on this side as well and in the middle again so this is where I'm, I'm looking like I have to ease just a tad so since this side needed for me to ease I'm just gonna go ahead and put in a couple more pins one on either side of the easing to make sure I don't have any issues when I get to my sewing machine Alright, so this step next is I'm going to go and sew around this. I'm going to still stay with my 3 8 inch of a seam allowance. I'm actually going to sew around this twice. I like to make sure that those straps are really reinforced. And then we have a couple more steps after that. But we're almost done. Alright, so I have gone around this bag. I've gone around the entire bag twice just wanting to make sure that I reinforce the handles that are in here. And I'm also going to reinforce them again by stitching around the top once I flip this out. So now I need to go to the side where I have the hole in the bag and I'm going to have to pull this entire bag out through this hole. So I'm just going to go in go to the far side is what I tend to do and then I can start pulling this out and if you break your stitches here it's no big deal because we're gonna close it on our sewing machine you could opt to hand sew it but I do everything on bags by machine and so I want to make sure I get my handles out There they are. And now I have my liner here. Now the next thing that you do is that you just fold this in and press your seam allowances inside. Just fold it in and press those in. And then you're going to just stitch with your machine to close this opening. There is no reason for you to do this by hand unless you just want to. But it's inside the bag. Nobody will see it but the person that's using the bag. And I'm going to hold off doing that step because I need to make a name label to put in here that I made it. And I'm hoping that I'll have time tomorrow. And my final step is that I'm going to go press this. And then I am going to stitch one quarter of an inch around the bag. But I'm going to stop now. It's actually 1.50 a.m. on Christmas Day. So... Belated Merry Christmas to everybody. And by the time you see this, there's no telling when it will be. <laughs> but um, I'm going to stop on this for right now. And I'm going to go to bed because I'm really not feeling well. But I do want to get this gift made. So uh, I'll be back. Okay. It's the next day. I got up this morning and I finished off the bag. I actually have the stitching that's one quarter of an inch from the edge. I just did that once. And because I put a three eighths inch seam when I sewed around the top part before I turned, that one quarter inch also catches the strap in the edge. So this strap now has four 
rows of stitching to keep it secure in this bag. And then I did on the inside just take a piece of muslin fabric or piece of fabric. It's not muslin, but I just wanted to write a label on here. I got a little close at the top there, but she can still make it out. But I just wanted her to know that it was made by me. And um, this is her bag. So I will see if I can take some pictures that's showing better than my camera is showing but I doubt it but I'm in a hurry it's actually Christmas day and I need to get this wrapped so I'll do what I can so thank you all so much for watching I hope you make a bag like this and uh, learn how to use like some kind of focus fabric to be the decorative element of your bag and I will see you all in my next video mm -hmm.